Hello and welcome to this live webcast from Scottish Ballet. We're at our headquarters in Glasgow at Tramway and we're preparing for our forthcoming production of A Streetcar Named Desire. I'm joined here with uh, our principal, Eve Mutso, and uh, in the background you can probably see working uh, our soloist, Luciana Ravizzi, who will be also playing the role of Blanche Dubois. It's a role that Eve created for the original production. Eve, I'd like to ask you about that original creation. So you worked with choreographer Annabel Lopez Ochoa and theatre director Nancy Meckler. It would be really wonderful to hear how you created the role and what sort of preparations you make in uh, preparing to go on stage as Blanche Dubois. The creation was very interesting because that was actually the first time I worked with theatre director putting together a production. Um, so it was interesting how every scene was very much thought through by, first of all, by Nancy and yeah. us. Um, so we created, as you call, a skeleton of uh, a scene and um, one by one steps what we want to say in that scene and how it should look like. And when the carcass was built, we took this uh, half prepared scene to another room and Annabelle set the choreography and steps on it. So in essence, your work with Nancy came first. Yes. And then in a way, the choreographic text was put on top of that theatrical skeleton. Yes. It, um, intention came first. Right. She um, always used to say, what's your want? What do you want to say in that scene? And um, also the dialogue was very important. So we, we um, lost all the ballet mime right, and yeah. took it to the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So even the look and the question answer type of dialogue through body language came through very clearly. And was that difficult to lose the mannerisms of uh, ballet mime, if you like, that, that the gesturing and the stagecraft that goes around that? Yes, at sometimes uh, it was pretty hard to lose. For example, if you're trying to say to Stanley after he helps you with a necklace, you, you just want to use your arms a bit more because you're used to emphasize where the necklace was put, so right. you, you show with your hand the neckline, mm -hmm. but um, at times we couldn't really do it because it had to be very organic and natural. So mu it's about um, having a much more natural look yes. to the performance yes. is important. And did you also um, work with the text, with the actual words from the play? Yes, we, we did have chunks of text written, um, uh, printed out for us. Um, I did quite a lot of research uh, ahead of time and then read the play again just before um, Nancy and Annabelle started working with us. Also, I've seen the film and um, researched a bit more about um, other plays Tennessee Williams wrote. Mm -hmm. So you could see the resemblance of her, uh, his female characters through his other works as well. So I think I put together a mix of uh, what Blanche could be mm -hmm. in our ballet version of this play. And importantly, this dance production isn't an exact replica of the play. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the scene that we can see Lucy uh, working on at the moment isn't really in the play. We, we tell the backstory to Blanche's life, which is in a sense turning the play on its head. What what are, you what are you aiming to communicate to the audience when they're watching this solo at the beginning? What's th what is the intention behind it? I guess we have a chance to show what Blanche, who she was before all these tragic uh, um, things happened mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. So in a ballet, y you find it quite hard to talk about past unless you lay it in front of audience's eyes. Yeah. So this is very, very uh, beginning of Blanche. Um, in this moth solo, you can see a lot of uh, butterfly um, movements, uh, moth-like actions towards light and warmth, and also transparency. Because there's a, a light bulb suspended above you, isn't there, at yes. the very beginning. And you've just said in this moth solo, 
that, as we know, uh, was the working title originally. Exactly. So perhaps you could just talk a little bit about that. Yes, um, that's a very good point. Uh, I don't think many people know that uh, this play could have been called a moth. Um, so I think Blanche's um, uh, character has a lot of uh, moth characteristic yeah, sizes, qualities. qualities what, what is yes. it that, that, what are the parallels between Blanche and the mm. idea of the moth? I would say curiosity, um, attraction towards new, attraction towards the light mm -hmm. and the warmness, and also, also very short uh, life expe mm. expect uh, expectancy, expectancy yeah. mm -hmm. of a moth. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, if you think of a moth, if it goes too close to the light, it burns and it becomes a dust. There's not much left mm. of her. Mm. So I would say um, the sensitivity of, uh, of Blanche when she, she was a young and innocent girl um, could be drawn yeah, absolutely. from there. We've got um, other imagery, and probably the most striking way to uh, talk about it is to talk about the costumes. Now, we've got these costumes um, here. It, this is the very f one of the very first costumes we see her in. What, I would, what strikes me looking at it is that we start white, and this really does show us all the way through the production where where she ends up. And I look at the color range, it gets darker and more intense. Perhaps you could pick two costumes that you feel are quite pivotal in her story. Yes, I think I would probably choose first and last. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, this first um, dress Blanche will wear is uh, can also quite uh, well presented in her wedding day. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's essentially a wedding dress? It is, a, uh, yeah. yes, a ve off white, um, very floaty. I think it's two or three uh, layers of uh, um, silk, organza, yeah, organza silk. silk yes. yeah. Yeah. And it, it um, allows, me, uh, allows Blanche to uh, do her solo and the rest of the partnering. It has a so-called beep yeah. hanging mm -hmm. um, and it keeps flapping. It's attached, but it shows that Anything is possible. You, you can't really see her figure very well, but... but it's got a lightness to it. Yes. I know that when you move in that, it, it follows the arc of the movement, and there's a, I guess it shows, a yes, a lightness to her character and an innocence, presumably. Yes. So later on, we move on to the negligee, which mm -hmm. is just uh, of apricot color, and it's a silk satin also, and she's wearing it under the white dress. Um, which shows uh, very well the era yeah. we are visiting. Indeed, yes. <laughs> and um, the, um, the dress you see there is the dress you see when uh, Blanche is dating Mitch. Yeah. And go also earlier on when she goes to the floor show. So you can see that it's different shades of pink and the, the impression she wants to show of herself is um, you have to put on these uh, pale colors and mm. almost uh, show your soft side to be uh, attractive and still look young. Now, this last costume is not soft and it's not naive. No. Talk us through this costume and when it comes in the production. You will see this coming down from the <laughs> sky, yeah. being lowered by our fabulous techie team. Uh, and it's uh, a silk which... Uh, it's very heavy, actually, mm. and it's covered with rhinestones and diamantes, yeah. which is obviously a fake version of real diamonds and rubies. And uh, it is a party dress she wears when she is entering into the scene we call extravaganza, which is her escapism from re realistic situation where she ends up. Um, and it's a dream world. It's when she sees all the men she met in her lifetime, all the encounters she had. And uh, I think it's just, you can't see through this dress. It's a cover, it's a facade she puts on, mm. and it's fake. And that's interesting because her story, all of her stories actually, that she tells throughout this, the production and, and in the play, they're fake, aren't they? Yes. She, it's a lie upon a lie upon a lie. 
and she's in essence, I guess, lying to herself. If if there was a costume that was really her, if we really saw who she was, what, how might that look? Well, it wouldn't be as light. It wouldn't be as transparent. It would be uh, shades of dark. Mm. Maybe there would be splashes of hope, mm. which every human being still has. But when even do, they wouldn't be a bright color. They would be dark. I, in my opinion, they would be. Uh, they, would, they, they would be layered uh, colors and layered different textures, different uh, fabrics. She is a social survivor in a way and uh, tries to control herself but um, fails. We're shortly, we're going to, just in a couple of minutes, we're going to see a scene and it's going to be when Blanche first encounters Stanley back at their apartment in New Orleans. It's obviously a pivotal meeting and it sends her on, if you like, the tram tracks to her own destruction. Why is this meeting so tense? What is it in her character? What is it that you have to think about that makes this meeting so electric? It's an interesting question because actually that's the scene which opens the play really. Mm. Um, so you see this uh, fading beauty arriving in this New Orleans, really shabby flat. And you can see instantly she's hiding something. Mm -hmm. She puts on a face and the facade, but you see that there is something wrong with her. Yeah. And I think from that then on, Stanley can see it straight away. He, he can, has a yes. good gut feeling, yeah. so we'll, we'll see the... It's if strong in the scene, I think, when you, you see Stanley's reaction to he, her, he sees right through. Yeah. So, but he's trying to be polite, and um, she has every right to be there. Well, she thinks she has. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we, we'll see the events happening and unraveling. So I think it's a very good scene to, uh, to show three characters. And in a way, already the scene is about tension. Who will have Stella's attention? Indeed. Stella's the third character, character. in the scene. Um, Eve, I'm going to let you prepare. Yes, thank I'm, you. I'm going <laughs> to stand up and just let you creep behind me. Um, we're going to be uh, looking at a scene then with um, Eve playing the role of Blanche Dubois. Our other principal, Eric Cavallari, will be playing Stanley and Sophie Martin hey, will be playing Stella. I'm just going to pause the rehearsal here. Um, yeah, Hope, are we able to Hi. set up? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm just going to borrow Hope Thank while you guys set up. Hi. So <laughs> Hi, Hope. Um, Hope is our rehearsal director. So Hope, can you um, tell us about the scene that we're going to see? Eve's spoken that it's the first meeting. Yeah. What is it that you, you'll be looking for to, for them to achieve in this scene? Um, the timing of the scene, as it is, it is a ballet, with obviously set to music, but also their timing in terms of their conversation with each other. Yeah. Taking enough time for them to react honestly to each other and to con and that their thought is complete, that their intention is um, completed within the scene. Yeah. So Stanley coming in from work, realizing that Blanche is in his very small apartment mm -hmm. um, makes him extremely uh, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And also just, he, he just doesn't want anyone, he doesn't want anyone else to be in the apartment. So his um, disapproval of her being there, but also the fact that, uh, you know, she's his wife's sister, that mm -hmm. he has to, in a way, be, be polite in some sort of sense. Yeah. So, in, and just for them to, with these complicated moments to really be honest with each other and to take mm. time to see individual reactions. That I think was the uh, the key to the success of this production was that it was just very succinct storytelling yeah. and and simple in a way, but very very difficult to uh, to achieve. Yeah. So that's what we've been trying to get back and for the dancers to become more comfortable with. Good. Well, I'll leave you to uh, uh, run right. this scene. Okay. Um, so this will be Sophie and Eve and Eric. So this is the 
this is the end of the previous scene and we're now in the apartment in New Orleans. Good, <laughs> good, let's stop there. Good, very good timing, guys, excellent. So I just had a, um, had a couple of things uh, for, just for, just for Stella and, and Blanche. It was, it was, so coming, coming in was good. Um, it actually was the moment with the glove, if we could just go back to giving Stella the glove. 
a, a little bit. Push up the square a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, when she did the picture. Yeah. Yeah. So just this, um, so, so you're trying on her finery in the mirror and really, really letting us know that it's a mirror you're looking into, good. And this belonged to our mother. And that, yeah, that tender moment between you is nice. Yeah. And then, you're just, then you start to come away. So this, just connecting that moment to the movement exactly and not just turning it into now we do some steps, exactly. Good. This time, this timing was all right into this. And now really using your plie here, wrapping around each other. Completing that a little bit more so if you don't ever t t try and complete the right arm a little bit more into that attitude. Going around her, there we go. Around. Then, <laughs> it's a very long glove. <laughs> so Eve, coming back with the papers, the reluctant, very nervous to tell her that you've lost the plantation. Yeah, it's just also just that moment, the confusion of what is this document is good, but read it first. There was again, the head started moving a little bit. You need to re look at it first. And then you don't understand. And we move it back, good. And then, yes, exactly. So, that, so it gets more intense as well. Good. And then off you go in the Stanley. Stanley coming in was fine. And um, the taking off the, taking off the jacket was good. Holding your ground there. Well, I had a note about the stillness. I think it was the stillness once you're coming back with the drink. Wait, when did you go and get your bottle? Just go and do that one first. Coming back, offering her the drink, and just exactly waiting for her reaction, but then before you move. Yeah, it's just that, that tendency that we have to start moving our feet before you've let Eve respond in the time it really takes to respond. And then you go and sit down. And this exchange was good. It was the, the next exchange all worked well. All worked well. Good. Any other problems? Timing was good. We were pushed a little bit with the glove. I'm sorry, the words that I was saying thank you, and then I was stopped by. Yeah, it by depends. Estella yeah, coming yeah. in, yeah, which can fluctuate. that could be too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, the assignment of property, <laughs> that was good. So just go to hugging her, having just found out that, so Stella's the baby, oh, congratulations. And then Stanley moving in to really establishing this fight over Stella. Make it, and the hand lingering on her is, is, is good because then we see that it's actually the two of you fighting for the property of Stella. Yeah, that works well. And the drop and then around, so that's good. Throwing that out, I'm not sure if, I think we should perhaps get on to the other group. Should we come in and try you guys, see? So Lucy and Sophie and Chris. Just set up your props as quick as you can. So it's very important, um, obviously on a long tour, we're about to go on a UK tour and a tour to the US with this production. So as always, we need um, at least more than one Stanley, at least more than one Blanche and Stella. So um, Lucy will be playing Blanche in this run through and Sophie will be playing Stella, different Sophie and Chris Harrison will be playing the role of Stanley. Okay. It's also really important that each of the different casts finds their own way to play these characters and to make sure that they make it their own performance, not just a carbon copy of what somebody else has done before them.
Good, guys, good. Good, we can go back. Again, timing, we were a little bit pushed on some things, but we can just carry on working on that. Um, can we go back to you coming in? It's the same thing I was talking about with Eve and Eric. Is that that? Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the rehearsal. Uh, we've one more week to go before we open next week in Inverness and then head to Edinburgh and down to the Sadler's Wells in London before we embark on our US tour. Hope you're able to join us for at least one of those performances. Bye-bye.